Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Everyone hear me? I was uh, invited here to be on the parents panel, so I'll talk a little bit about parenting. It's nice to see these kids here. I know many of you. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. How you doing? I remember being your age, and that's where I'll start. I remember thinking about Christmas and how exciting it was because I didn't have a lot of Muslim family around me. And, uh, you know, I spent 25 years in corporate America, and one thing I noticed is that every the week of Thanksgiving, things kind of change. Nobody can put their finger on it, but in the office environment, things kind of change. All these stressed out people just kind of chill out. And then they start thinking about family. They don't think about their bonuses. They're worried about their bonuses because they have to spend money. But that comes later in the year, after Christmas. And I, just, and, I, and, I, and I watched them, you know, because um, I didn't really feel a lot of things about Ramadan. I didn't have any feelings in my heart. I was kind of dead. My teachers would talk about looking forward to Ramadan, and I would be like, hmm, you know, why is my heart not, not connected? But I'd feel people around me feel, feel for Christmas. So I felt like I'm neither here nor there. I don't belong here. I don't belong there. I don't feel it for Christmas, but I can observe them like I can observe a bunch of, you know, like a society, like an anthropologist kind of observing them. And one thing I realized, what they do is they, number one, they slow down. They really slow down. You know, the thing that has to be like really urgently done, it doesn't get done. It's okay. It's all right. They're kind of chill. It's almost like your parent is like, man, I know he's going to get mad at me, but wow, he's kind of chill today. I got away with one, you know? The boss is kind of like that. Number two, they kind of breathe. They, they take a long-term look. They don't, they're not going to hire an interview and do those things in December. It's like, no, December's not for that. We're going to worry about that at the end of the year. They kind of chill out. Um, what else do they do? They, um, they listen more. They listen to each other. Instead of just work, it's about family. Hey, how are your kids doing? Wait, where are you going on vacation? Where are you going to spend Christmas? They kind of listen because they're, they're interested in something else, right? All of a sudden, they're interested in something else. And then what they do is they, um, they, they sort of enjoy each other. They're really listening, you know? It's not like, hey, Bob, how are your kids? Mm, or on the elevator, you know? Your half sentence, hey, my kids, uh, oh, okay, bye, see ya. He just gets off the elevator and leaves, you know? They actually enjoy each other's words. They enjoy each other's companies. And the other thing is they, they feel a sense of love. They feel a sense of love for humanity. And because I'm the person that's in the office and I see them every day, you know, they, they kind of, I feel like they have a little more love for me. So it's kind of interesting, right? So if you're not connected to their society, you can definitely feel a change. And so what I did was wonder why that change didn't happen in my heart. I remember when I was uh, 12 years old, I was Eamon's age. Are you 12? 11? 13, 12, Star Wars came out. That was cool, right? I didn't know how good Star Wars would be, but then I remember when the second one came out, the f number five, right? They call it number five now, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Man, I was excited. But what's wrong with me? I don't look forward to Ramadan like that. What's wrong with me? You know, I wondered, I wondered. Because people didn't talk to me about what the sister Heba said. People didn't talk to me about the why. They talk to me about do this, do that, but not the why. So leaving Islam becomes a huge door, just becomes a huge door. And it's sad because you have to do toba for your days. So um, it's hard being a parent now, but I look back at myself, it was always hard. 12 was hard, 15 was hard, 17 was hard. So my advice to parents is, don't fall asleep on how hard it is to be a kid when you come home. Because uh, you're, alhamdulillah, you're here, you're a Muslim. If you're listening to this live stream, you're a Muslim, alhamdulillah. But are you sure your kids are going to be a Muslim? Are you sure they're going to enjoy Ramadan? Are you sure they're going to care? Um, I remember thinking, I'm more excited about the kickoff to the football season than I am about Ramadan. I'm not happy to say that but it actually happened to me a lot. I can't even remember the score of the first game. It's, it's just silly, it's dumb. 
But I'm looking forward, so forward to that moment of the year. Why am I not looking forward to Ramadan? Because I didn't know the why. I didn't know the why. So there's two things you need to know. You need to know the why. So always ask why. And make your parents sit down, chill out, relax, breathe, listen. Let's help each other out. And the other thing you need to know is you need to know the Prophet Because when you look at how difficult his life was, you kind of feel ashamed for complaining. It's like, it's not that bad. I mean, mashallah, he, he suffered through everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved him as the best of creation. Why? So that if you can look at his life, you can bear it. Man, my favorite story of, um, as being a parent, um, just, just my favorite story of the Prophet is a very simple story. It's the fact that he sat down with a child who lost his bird. Like he was running an ummah, he had so much responsibility, war, enemies, munafiqoon, people destroying the religion. But he cared about the kid who had a bird, who lost his bird. He cared about that little heart. And if he cared about that little heart on the street of Medina, we should care about the hearts of our children. It doesn't matter what your boss did. Come home, leave that mailbox closed. I used to have a friend, he would tell me that he would hate it when his dad would grab the mail from the mailbox and come in the door. Because he saw the bills, he got stressed out, and then he'd come in angry and take it out on somebody. That's tyrannical. Like, what did those children do to deserve your anger? You're taking out the anger of the whole day onto the kids. They're, just, they're happy to see you. They're supposed to be happy to see you. I know someone who told me that when the garage door opens, they just go, oh, man, dad's home. Man, dad's home. It's brutal, right? But they love, we, we parents love our children. I can honestly tell you that father loved his children. I know, I know who those children were. And I know that father. I went to college with him. He loved his children, but he didn't stop and think. And so, alhamdulillah, we have the ability to stop and think. We have the ability to look at Ramadan and say, you know what, tonight, tonight, we can be 10% better. But by the time Ramadan starts, we can be 20% better. Just let's start to breathe. Let's start to chill out. Let's start to, um, maybe the kids could not fight throw paint on each other, have a food fight, and the dad comes home. That would help. That would help. And maybe the dad not check the, the bills when he comes home. That would help, right? We can all help each other out because it's hard being a parent. It's hard being a kid. So alhamdulillah, you know, uh, I raised my children. I have three boys. Some of you know them, mashallah. And my goal was, it's a simple goal. Don't let them get lost like I did. Don't do what I did. Make sure you're looking at that little lamp in their heart and make sure that you're kindling it, that you're working it. And I need to ask them, you know, if I'm taking you over here on a Friday night, you want to be here, I got to find, I can't just force you over here. You're not going to like it. So I try to take them places they, they, they liked, try to do things they liked. So what can we do for Ramadan? We can enjoy our community. We can have a moon sighting uh, festival. We can go out there. And if you don't have community, you don't know. There's two places in the Bay Area, maybe three now. But Lawrence Livermore Labs, there's an entire bunch of families that come from moon sighting. So in the community, go out there. Take treats. Give children a great, great night, great beginning to Ramadan. Um, bake cookies for your neighbors. Tell them that this is a Ramadan treat for you. And see, you know, mashallah, just spread the barakah. Bake with them. Um, Decorate. Uh, I know a family that had a shukr jar. So every night before Ramadan, they would look like, write little gratitude slips in Shaban. Then they would take those slips, they would make them into a chain, they would decorate them out the door. You go to the house, you're like, what is that chain? It's like all the shukr that our family has before Ramadan starts. It's kind of like aiming your gun. You want to aim your gun before you shoot it. Just kind of line it up this way, line it up this way, or it's going to miss. So alhamdulillah, there's a lot of things we can talk about. I'm so proud of you guys to be here. I mean, God knows where I was on a Friday night. 
you know, probably out with my skateboard when I was 12, waiting for Star Wars to come. Um, and uh, mashallah, there's, uh, so my advice for parents, um, before you have parents, before you have children, or even after you have children, or even tonight, if you haven't done it, you've got to get on the same page. You've got to get on the same page. And there's one very, very important reason for that, is because the mother is the teacher, she's the nurturer, but the father is the validator, right? If you type into a file and you work all day and you type something and you don't save it, you just close it, it's gone. So the mother does all the typing, she nurtures the children. And the father comes and says, close, boom, gone. Religion's gone. But if the father says, save, everything gets saved. So the children look to the mother for learning. They look to the father for validation. The, valid, the father can just delete everything. if He's not on the same page. So get on the same page. Um, teach with love. Just remember one story. If you have children, just remember the Prophet ﷺ sitting with us, with someone else's child because of their bird. Um, um, and make the home, you know, the home Islam has to work. If your children are seeing that Islam's not working in the home, parents don't get along, in-law battles, whatever, God knows whatever, you know, I'm sure the therapists know all about these stories. Islam has to work in the home. Otherwise, you're opening a big wide door. A truck can drive through it. Kids just gonna take his Islam and just leave, right? So Islam has to work. As parents, we have to make Islam work. MashaAllah, you know, I see the parents bringing you guys here when children play and make noise, hey, let them play and make noise. They're happy, they're jumping around the mosque. I wasn't even anywhere near one. So, um, you know, lead with that. Um, so I mentioned a couple things, you know, the, the baraka jar, the, the chain you can make, a light the house, get lanterns, uh, do an art project and then decorate, uh, bake with the, with the kids and share the cookies. Um, go, in, go before Ramadan and work in a food bank just to prepare your mind for how hungry people are. Go to a food bank and work there and see people come by and get food. Just the morsel, the morsel of food that goes into a hungry person's belly, just, you know, it's far greater than our fasting morsels. And we know how sweet dates taste after Ramadan. The pakoras, the dates, and the ruavza, whatever, to get going. Um, make, uh, make Eid, Make Eid morning a good, a good day. You know, slow down. So running around in Ramadan, doing tons of iftars, getting stressed out, doing groceries, slow down. We're all, we all have food on our tables. Invite people for simple meals, spend time together, inshallah. So alhamdulillah, you know, uh, I look forward, I try to strive for the day that my, I look forward to Ramadan more than I look forward to the next Star Wars movie. I've outgrown those a little bit. I haven't outgrown the football, the excitement for football, but mashallah, I look forward to the day to strive to get, get as excited about Ramadan, and inshallah, I'm really excited. My teachers have really put a lot of um, knowledge in me about the why, and so now I know, so I don't feel lost. I know I'm not enjoying Christmas, I'm observing, but I'm enjoying Ramadan. And man, the moon sighting party that's, that's out at Lawrence Livermore Lab, I live for that, I live for that. And we play um, some Ramadan music on the way over. My kids sing, uh, and so we really enjoy that. So Jazakallah Khair for being here, and Jazakallah Khair for listening to me. And, uh, you know, we can all be better, inshallah. And we, ha we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this beautiful, beautiful month, like a gift. It's like the weekend of the year, right? Weekend of the year. You guys all look forward to the weekend. But the thing is, it can't be too, too crazy and busy. We've got to just enjoy each other, enjoy the Qur'an, enjoy the fasting, and the rest will come inshallah. And then love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And think about the boy with the bird. Assalamu alaikum.